Welcome back to the State and Local Sports Show with Mark Tennis, co-founder and editor of CalHighSports.com. Uh, deep into high school softball season yesterday, East Union ranked 11th in the state by Cal High Sports. A three-run walk-off home run by Alejandro Roscoe, their senior catcher, to beat Oakdale, a team that's on the bubble of your top 20 rankings. A uh, rivalry that's developed over the years, not so much between the schools, but those two programs. With that victory, which I'd say so far is East Union's signature win, do they have a chance to ascend the state rankings, or is that top 10 so packed? Is it going to be tougher than the crowd um, in there? They're probably going to go up a spot or two. Um, they're still a little bit of a disadvantage being from the Sac Joaquin section, Division Three, and that's because there are so many good teams that play each other in the southern section, and they're Division One and Division Two. So uh, there's still going to be some a few teams hopping ahead of them that get big wins down south and in the Bay Area. But if they keep winning, they'll go from 11th to 10th, 10th to 9th, 8th, to, you know, a little bit slower each week. And if they're sitting there undefeated at the end of the season, you know, they'll be obviously a lot higher. Last year, Brian Goulart, their coach of 15 years, was your medium schools uh, state coach of the year. I know a lot of times, especially with coach of the year honors, you try and do new people. But if East Union say they were to run the table and, you know, their, their cleanup hitter, Alexis Eric, is out for the year or two, so they're a bit... Uh, thinner offensively than they thought. Uh, would he have a chance at that honor again, or is it tough to cycle through? That yeah, we we, uh, we basically have a rule uh, that we don't um, choose anyone twice. Uh, and being California is a 1,200 high schools, and there's so many great coaches. Great choices. <laughs> we we usually can keep to that rule almost all the time. I mean, Bob Latasor of De La Salle football fame, for example, was only picked once. You know, Gary McKnight from Santa Ana Modern Day, we, we've only picked once. So um, we, we, we will sometimes pick a divisional coach of the year a second time if he was the overall state coach of the year. So if for some reason we decided that Brian was the state coach of the year, you know, overall for the entire state and all divisions, then he would repeat in Division uh, 3, but otherwise he, he wouldn't be picked a second time. While we're filming this, the Golden State Warriors a couple hours away from trying from their 73rd win. I think they're probably going to get it, although they might lose by 20 by the time this comes out. Uh, NBA playoffs on the doorstep. Uh, for you, though, looking which basketball records high school-wise stand out to you when you think back when you kind of like sports show, uh, a, a book you helped create has its own, uh, or I don't know if that was mostly your work yeah. this year, but uh, any records stand out to you as the Warriors approach a potential record of their own? Well, when you mention the Warriors, you know, I think of Oakland, and when I think of Oakland, I think of some of the great teams and players that have come along in Oakland, and that, that leads me, obviously, to McClyman's of Oakland, where Bill Russell went, and then in the 19, late 1950s, and early 60s they were the dominant team in California and they once won 65 games in a row um, and had a couple of undefeated seasons so you mentioned the Warriors in Oakland I, I usually come back around to McClyman. You know Oakland Alameda is right there St. Joseph Notre Dame uh, Jason Kidd's from there he's coaching the Bucks. they're not in the playoffs but the NBA playoffs about to start any California high school ties of guys who are in there? Well again you got the Warriors Clay Thompson from Santa Margarita in Southern California his last high school game was at Arco Arena uh, in Division 3 the state finals he scored 37 points and one of the best performances we've seen in the state final was by Clay Thompson and then, uh, you know, the Houston Rockets, I'm not sure they're going to be in or not, but um, James Harden from uh, Artesia, his last game was against St. Mary's of Stockton in the state final. And then, wow, of course, yeah, that. no, yeah, his last game was against St. Mary's. Uh, it was a, I think they won by 40. <laughs> they were expected to win real bad, and they did. Um, and then there's just, you know, there's a lot of players, you know. You know, Clay Thompson, you know, Kawhi Leonard from the uh, San Antonio Spurs, you know, close to MVP type player now, and he was our state player of the year, senior year of high school, I believe it was in 2009. He led ML King of Riverside to a state title. So we've had a lot of players in the NBA who've come from California high schools, quite a number of them actually, I think more than any other state. Now, spring sports is definitely a change of pace in the high school season. Uh, perhaps not the, the money makers of football and basketball, but the most busy season, at least for the Sac Joaquin section. For you guys, just looking at kind of what moves the needle, what tends to be uh, statistically your most popular sport as you head into spring? Is it consistent every year? Does it vary? And why do you think that is? Um, I think most, for the most part, for, for our purposes at Cal High Sports, it's probably baseball. And uh, that's only because baseball, you have all the connections with um, Major League Baseball, you know, guys who are from a particular high school or whatever. You know, like Trevor Brown of the Giants, who hit two home runs yesterday in their win. Um, he's from Hart High School in Newhall. 
down in Southern California. He's one of four guys from Hart who are now in the, in the, in the majors, which is a great total. So we get those kind of comments and those kind of connections. Um, it makes baseball a little bit more. Uh, softball, uh, though, has a very uh, passionate group of fans, of, of, of parents and fans of their particular schools. And um, that, that definitely fuels the needle as well. But baseball, probably a little bit more because of some of those other connections I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, now, your column, Mark Dennis has a column for the record in StockingPreps.com every week. This week, you're talking about the Lions All Star football game, which you help organize. Uh, that's coming up in June. And uh, we got the North coach, Stags, Don Norton, the South coach, I believe it's Rob Cozart of Patterson. Right. And you talked about last year was an incredible year for points, I believe 99 or 89 points combined, but this year that could be left behind. I, just watching Stag and Norton in general, I know he likes to open up the field. And sounds like we might be able to hit the 100 mark this year if things go right. Well, you know, Stag averaged almost 40 points a game last year, and that was even though they got shut out in their first game by Lincoln. Uh, but they just scored like crazy at the end of the season. Now, Patterson was even more prolific. They scored uh, 589 points, almost 50 a game. Their last game, they lost 62 to 52. And the game before that, they won 73 to 42. So both coaches are basically telling their kids, um, you better be ready when you come to the Lions practice because we're going to go fast, fast, fast. There's going to be no huddling. It's going to be fast, fast, fast. And and, the, and looking at the lineup of players, there's a lot of really good players, very prolific offensive players from, from a lot of different schools. It should be a very high-scoring, very fun game. That, you know, of course, you get to pick a couple of your players. Don Norton has his quarterback, Levante Bushnell, who could be a quarterback, could be a slot receiver. They also have a side round from McNair, so that'll be a fun team to watch offensively. Uh, something last year that it came about with the game, since the North got a big lead, something I didn't know, and as we were talking about, a lot of the fans didn't know, is that when you get to a, a certain lead, the team that's down, when they score, they'll get the ball back. And that certainly played a role in the, in the North losing their lead now, but North made a lot of key mistakes, and even with that rule, they should not have lost that game. But it was frustrating to a lot of the players and fans, I personally am not a fan of it being a different type of football given they put in that same kind of brutal preparation during the week. And I know that you have a, a large part in the game. So what what is your, I guess, thoughts on that rule? And I know you mentioned that maybe you're kind of trying to adjust it this year to make it more normalized. Yeah, I, I actually don't have much to do as far as the, the, the rules of the game. That's, that's from people like Coach Schneider and some of the other coaches that have been in the game. And they're trying to, you know, make the game competitive, make it more interesting. You know, and you could do a lot more weird things than just having a, a touchdown roll where the, the team gets the ball back. But I think this year there's going to be, uh, I think the margin is a little bit higher for the, for the, the team giving up the touchdown, being able to, get, to not get the ball back again. Um, so there's slightly different rules. But I think the one thing we need to do with the Lions game is just tell people that the rule is in place. Um, communicate it very clearly at the beginning of the game. Communicate it very clearly by having a huge uh, announcement in the program, like on the second page, so people know exactly what's going to happen if a team gets ahead by three touchdowns or four touchdowns, that the team that scores its way behind is going to get the ball right back. So that will happen. But I don't, I don't know exactly what the margin is, but I know it's a higher margin than it was last year. All right, well, CaliSports.com, the Gold Club membership, state record books, rankings, all the insider content, less than 20 bucks a year, less than $2 a month. And thanks for joining us as always, Mark. Appreciate it. Great time as always. Thanks.